Claire, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Jeff. Welcome back to the in between. Remember, this is our world of imagination, and we can go anywhere and see anything. That's so, right. I wanted to go to the mountains because the mountains are my happy place. Isn't wow. it beautiful? It is so beautiful. I can see why this <sighs> makes you happy. Yeah. Oh, can we check out my happy place? Sure. All right, let's go. Oh, it's so pretty. Nice. I love the beach. Just putting my toes in the sand, listening to the waves is beautiful. Oh, always. Very pretty location. Nice pick. So, Claire, what are we doing today? Are we just going to happy places and being happy? I mean, that's great, but that I That would know. be fun. But we are going to continue to learn more about the fruit of the Spirit. But first, I wanted to take us to our happy places because today we're learning about joy. Oh, but did you know that joy and happiness are not the same thing? You're right. They are not the same thing at all but they get confused all the time. So it's important for us to see the differences. You with me? I think so. Good, because we'll get to joy, but first a quick recap. Remember, we're studying the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, and when we believe in Jesus and trust in Him as our Savior and our King, the Bible tells us that we have the Holy Spirit in us. That means that we're able to live by God's Spirit. We've learned that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Galatia. He told the believers there not to live by the flesh. And that simply means to not be controlled by our sinful desires and the way we live if we didn't know Jesus, like being unkind and selfish, prideful and rude. Instead, Paul told them to live by the fruit of the Spirit. He said, the fruit the Holy Spirit produces is love, joy and peace. It is being patient, kind, and good. It is being faithful and gentle and having control of oneself. When we live by God's Spirit, we will see evidence of this fruit in our lives. Now today, the attribute or fruit we're going to look at is joy. Now, like I said a moment ago, joy is often confused with happiness, but they're actually very different. When Paul is telling believers to be joyful, he doesn't mean we're going around skipping and singing songs with a giant smile on our face all day, every day. Yeah, the type of joy that the Bible talks about is choosing to worship God even when we're not happy. Happiness is a moment by moment feeling based on our circumstances. Right, kind of like our happy places earlier. When I'm on top of a mountain looking at beautiful surroundings, I'm happy. But I'm happy because I'm in my favorite place in the world. What happens when my circumstances change and now I'm here? and I'm stuck in one of these cars in a traffic jam for two hours. And you have to go to the bathroom. Why do I have to go to the bathroom? I always have to go to the bathroom when I'm stuck in traffic. Uh, that's true. Yeah. That's, or that's accurate. Think about this, Claire. What if you're here <gasps> oh. and you're taking a test? And you don't know the answer. Because you didn't study enough. Or just because it's math and <laughs> math is hard. Or what if you're here? and you have to clean this dirty kitchen. Uh, or what about here? And you have to clean up all the toys. Do you get the picture? These are not circumstances that usually make us happy, but as believers, we have God's spirit in us. So this means we can choose to be joyful even when our circumstances change. Let's watch a Bible story together and see how we can live this out. Slapstick Theater. Paul and Silas. This is Paul, oh, hey. who told people about Jesus in lots of different places. One day, Paul was walking with his friend Silas. Hey, yo. They were being followed by a girl who was controlled by an evil spirit. Her owners used her to make money. After days and days of this happening, Paul got so annoyed that he turned around and told the evil spirit to leave her. So the girl was freed. But her owners got mad at Paul and Silas because they wouldn't make any money off of her anymore. And they had them thrown in jail. The jailer locked them up. Oh man! Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, and the chains of all the prisoners fell off. Oh, what just happened? 
but Paul and Silas didn't leave, even though they could have. Several people decided to follow Jesus that night, including the jailer and his whole family. And the next morning, they were released from jail and the city officials even apologized to them. Sorry about that. Paul and Silas encouraged the Christians in the town and they continued on their mission to tell people about Jesus. See ya. That story is a really great reminder to us about how we can choose to worship God and be joyful in our circumstances, even when we're not happy about them. Exactly. I doubt Paul and Silas were happy to be wrongly accused and thrown in jail, but instead of grumbling and complaining in those circumstances, do you remember what they did? They sang praises to God and worshiped him. And then when God sent an earthquake that released them from their chains, Paul and Silas didn't leave the jail. They trusted God and continued to tell those around them about all that he had done for them. Yes, this is the part I want to talk about because I think it is so cool and will give us more insight about joy. When Paul and Silas were thrown into prison, there was a jailer, like a guard, who was assigned to keep watch over them. When the earthquake shook the foundation of the jail, all of their chains came loose. Well, the guard assumed all of the prisoners would run out of the jail and be free. I mean. Can you blame them? Wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd probably use that as my opportunity to get out of there, as my ticket out of jail. For sure, I would absolutely do that, but not Paul and Silas. Instead, they trusted God and they stayed right where they were. The jailer, assuming that they had run away, pulled out his sword and was about to kill himself. Yeah, he knew that he would be held responsible for letting all those prisoners get away. And he felt hopeless enough to take his own life because of it. But before he could, Paul yelled out to him, wait, we're all here, don't harm yourself. The jailer was so shaken and overcome, he rushed into the cell and asked them, what must I do to be saved? Meaning, how can I have eternal life? So Paul and Silas said to him, believe in the Lord Jesus, then you and everyone in your house will be saved. And that's exactly what happened. You can read the entire account of that scene in Acts 16 in the Bible. That's right. The jailer took Paul and Silas to his house and in Acts 16, 34, we read about the jailer, that he and everyone who lived with him were filled with joy. They had become believers in God. Did you catch that, guys? He and everyone who lived with him were filled with what? Joy, because they had become believers in God. Now, why were they filled with joy, Jeff? Well, because they had become believers in God. The story helps us see that true and lasting joy, the kind that isn't dependent on circumstances, well, that kind of joy comes from God. When we believe in God and worship Jesus as our Savior and King, we have His Spirit living inside us. And this makes us able to choose joy even when our circumstances aren't what we had hoped. Jeff, I have an idea. Let's go to the library. I have a perfect scripture that I want you to help explain. Guys, it's time for What? What does that mean? Sweet! Back at my favorite library, Claire. This place is awesome, let's be honest. Okay, so what's the scripture question for today? Are you ready? I think so. Here it is. So before Jesus' death and resurrection, he gave his disciples some final instructions. While he was talking with them, he used a word picture of a vine and branches, saying that he is the vine and we are the branches and that we are to remain in him. Yeah, so that's in John 15. Yes, verses 9 through 11. They say, as my father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. So my wow, what's that mean question is this. There's all this talk about remaining in his love and keeping his commands. And then he says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. 
What does that mean? How can our joy be complete? Such a great question, Claire. And this is a really important verse to think about, love and obedience. This verse reminds us of two big things. The first is this, that our obedience to God isn't something we do to earn His love. It's something we do because we've already been loved by Him. We remain in God's love for us. But then Jesus does something amazing. He connects our obedience to Him and His Word with the concept of lasting and true, deep joy. Oftentimes it's easy to think that we'll obey once we're joyful already, but Jesus is actually turning that upside down. He's saying, no, Jesus is saying that if you obey me because I love you, that you'll actually have joy on the other side of that obedience. You obeying me will lead to greater and deeper lasting joy because you have a relationship with me that's based on my love for you. And remember, it's because of the Holy Spirit in us that we can do all of this stuff to begin with. For sure. So, okay. Let's go ahead and apply that, all right? Let's see how we can have joy or be joyful even when our circumstances aren't what we had planned or hoped for. It's time for Living by the Spirit, the segment of our show where we look at different scenarios and see how we might live differently when we live by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Hi, Hulk, it's time to go. Where, where we go, park? Well, we said we would go to the park, but first we need to go to the homeless shelter for the food drive. Hulk wants to be happy. He wants to go to the park. I understand. We can go to the park after, but let's go help the homeless people first. Ugh. Okay, fine. Hey there! Hi! Um, we brought some food for your food drive for the homeless shelter. It's with Hulk. Hmm, where's he? Hulk smash. Oh, there he is. Hey, Hulk. Hello. Oh my goodness, you brought so much food for our food drive. That is so kind and thoughtful of you. You will help so many people. Hulk is just joyful that he was able to help bring peace. Thank you. Wow, thank you so, so much, Hulk. Hey, Hulk, are you ready to go to the park now? Yes, yes, yes. Hulk wants to go to the park. Let's go! That was a great example of how we can choose to be joyful in our circumstances. Hulk really didn't want to go help carry those cans to the homeless shelter, but when he chose to be obedient and help out, he was filled with joy. Yeah! That's a really important point, guys, because you'll have opportunities to do this all the time. When your mom or dad asks you to do your chores, or a friend asks you to play their favorite game and you'd rather play a different one, sometimes you might not feel happy to do that, but often when we make sacrifices for others, joy follows. We show the world around us that we have God's Spirit in us when we choose to be joyful because we know God's promises are true. This is how we remain in Christ, like the passage from John 15 that we read. When we obey God, His joy is in us, and our joy is complete. And now, it's time for Mystery Fruit. Oh, no. We're back at it again, Jeff. Round oh, three. Okay. So, you know the rules. You have got to look at these items and determine what they are in, what mystery fruit dessert item they make. Okay. So, let's start with this. Oh, um, definitely cherry. Ooh, yeah, those smell so good. Um, cherry uh, chocolate syrup. I think you have to, yeah, you should taste it. Wait, no, no. Thing. Is it chocolate pudding or chocolate syrup? <laughs> That's one way to do it. I think it's chocolate syrup. And then uh, either really melted butter <laughs> or whipped cream. Okay, sorry. I'm going to guess that this is like a, like maybe a, um, some kind of cherry flavored, like a uh, ice cream cherry sundae. Cherry, like an ice cream sundae. Ice cream sundae, your final With guess? With fruit in it, so it's mystery fruit. What kind of fruit? Cherries, banana split. 
no, oh, I don't know. Fruity ice cream. Fruity ice cream sundae. Final guess? Yes. Is that what you guys thought? <laughs> Let's find out. Oh. Let's go, all right. Oh, Ooh. he got it, guys. I Ooh. was nervous I was gonna have to eat something really gross that time. And that looked delicious. Now let's see if you were right. What kind of, is it a fruity ice cream? This isn't like trick ice cream, is it? You're eating it. I have to find out. Oh, um. Yep. It's good. It's, I think it's a cherry ice cream. It's really yummy. Oh, friends. All right, we'll see you next time.